Good morning. morning. I know you all wanted to sing along with that, and you'll get a chance to do that later in the service. Well, welcome to All Faiths Unitarian Congregation. Uh, Winter is finally over, so it's cooled off. (laughs) I don't think we need to ask the climate action team what's up with that. But anyway, (laughs) welcome to All Faiths. Uh, we're glad that you made it here this morning to be with us. My name is Regina Kel Martin, and I'll be the worship associate today. Um, here at All Face, you will find a diverse and inclusive spiritual community where we welcome people of, with many beliefs. You can bring your whole self, your full identity, your questioning mind, and your expansive heart. At All Faiths, we have more than one way of experiencing the world and understanding the sacred. So no matter who you are or where you are in your spiritual journey, and no matter whom you love, you are always welcome here. Do we happen to have any first or second time visitors here today? Ah, welcome. We're glad you're here. Um, If anyone would like to learn more about membership, Fran Way is not here today, and there's nobody in the membership corner, but look for somebody who looks like they've been here for a long time. (laughs) and they'll be able to tell you all about membership. (laughs) So I do have a few announcements to make. Um, April is Share the Plate with One Tree. One Tree is a beneficiary of the Climate Action Team. Um, You may have run into a table outside the front door selling tickets to Disco Night, which will be April 30th. The tickets are $20 a piece. Only advanced tickets are being sold. You can't get them at the door, so be sure to reserve or pick up your tickets today. Uh, There is no child and youth program today, but children are welcome to stay with us during our service. Uh, There will be no racial equity team meeting this morning or this week. Usually it's on Tuesday, but it won't be this week. The 10 o'clock scholar will be back with Reverend CJ, uh, the Wellspring program, and that will be on Wednesday via Zoom at 10 o'clock. Fridays, uh, Domino's is becoming quite competitive and quite popular, so you might want to come and play dominoes on Friday at 2. And of course, every Saturday we have choir rehearsal with uh, Carlos at 2 p.m. And then Sunday mornings we have news talk with either Richard Keelan or sometimes Sharon Gray, depends on who's here. And next Sunday will be our McGregor Clinic. Uh, They are looking for men's and women's clothing. Um, They don't really need food at this time, non-perishable foods, but they would appreciate any clothing that you uh, may want to donate. So now if you would rise and body your spirit as we sing hymn number 361, Enter, Rejoice, and Come In. Enter, rejoice, and come in. Enter, rejoice, and come in. Today will be a joyful day. I'd like to ask Linda Runkle to come forward and light our chalice. And if you would repeat the uh, words that are in your order of service as she does that. As we light our chalice today, let us remember that we are a part of a greater community of faith. May this dancing flame inspire us to fill our lives with the Unitarian Universalist ideas of love, justice, and truth. And now it's time for our joys and sorrows, so if you have a joy or sorrow you would like to share. 
you can come forward at this time. Here at All Face, we're one family, and families share those sad times and also the joyful times of celebration. So I'd love it if anyone wants to, you know, sometimes at a certain stage of life, we have mostly memorial services and hospital visits, but then we have grandchildren and we have babies and weddings. Remember babies and weddings? <laughs> have we had anything like that going on or any great trips that you'd like to share with us? Anything? Okay, well, I'm going to share a little memory. Yesterday was uh, April 9th, and that was my parents' wedding anniversary, which we celebrated for a number of years until they got divorced. But it was also the end of the Civil War when General Grant and General Lee met. Now we're named after General Lee. But it was interesting to read that General R Lee wore a brand new uniform to meet with General Grant to surrender. And General Grant wore the same grubby outfit that he'd worn the day before, which was a private's uniform, and he just had the general bars on his shoulders and I love that, that essence of the humility of the victors. And when they met and Lee surrendered, he said, I just have a favor to ask. My troops are starving, can you feed them? And General Grant said, yes, we will take care of them. The graciousness and the humility of victory. And I think those are things that we can learn from. So I hope you all have a blessed, healthy, and happy week. Is that better? Yeah. Okay. If you would take a moment uh, to take a nice deep breath and close your eyes and ground yourself as we turn our hearts and our minds to today's service. And now if you would please rise and body your spirit as we sing together hymn number 123, Spirit of Life, and the words are on the back of your order of service. Today's opening words are by Paul Stefan Dodenhoff. 
The freedom to doubt, to question, to be content to live in mystery is central to the liberal religious tradition. Like the process of evolution itself, the path that we follow, our practice, if our practice, if you will, is not easy or simple. It isn't without its dead ends or disappointments. It doesn't guarantee that all of our conclusions will be final or that we will ever find an answer to all of our questions. But also, like the process of evolution, it is filled with great expressions of beauty and awe that are sometimes born of great struggle and at other times come as unexpected grace. Today's reading is by Stephen M. Schick, and it's entitled, Useful Anger. But what is to be done with it, this anger that dare not be swallowed? Should it be diluted with denial, cooled with indifference? Should it be sweetened with good intentions, softened with lies? Should it be spewed out red hot over searing tongues, scorching the guilty and innocent alike? What's to be done with it, this anger that dare not be swallowed? Don't dilute it, deny it, or cool it. Don't sweeten it or soften it. But pause for a moment. 
Could you hold it before your eyes, examine it with your heart and mind? Could you hold it, then touch it to your belly, the place where your soul rests? Could you let it enter there, knowing it is the part of you that needs to be treated kindly, that needs to be listened to, that needs to be honored? For it has the power to save you, to save us all. And now if you would please rise and body your spirit as we sing him, no number, <laughs> let there be peace on earth. And the words are on the back of your order of service. Annalie Hodanik, and I am a member of All Faith. I am not a professional speaker. <laughs> when our good reverend asked me if I wanted to deliver a message this Sunday, I at first laughed, and when I realized that I actually agreed, I panicked. <laughs> OMG, what have I done? <laughs> While I knew the big G, was not going to be any help. But I turned to the other G, the one we all have become very attached to, the one that has answers to everything, Google. <laughs> How does one start with a subject that is so complex, so charged, so difficult? A micro course in philosophy, ethics, morals? I was not a very studious girl. The books I kept show clear evidence of my wandering mind with scribbles and doodles of kittens and flowers. But I can still recite lines of poetry by Goethe and Schiller. Vivos voco, vulgura franco, the song of the bell. Festgemauert in der Erde, steht die Form aus Mehl gebaut. Fertig soll die Glocke wehren. Frischgesellen sei zur Hand. Von der Stirne heiß rinnen muss der Schweiß. Soll das Werk dein Meister loben, doch der Segen kommt von oben. I'm not going to translate. <laughs> there are 400 more lines to this poem, <laughs> and we had to memorize that. What our educators thought about it, what was their intention? Their intention was evil, 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 evil. <laughs> <laughs> However, this time, I really had to focus, research, think, and use all my Google skills so this message would hold your attention. There is not a single smiley kitten face in my notes. <laughs> 
Intention. Definition according to Wikipedia. Intention, intent, purpose, design, aim, <clears throat> end, object, objective, goal. A mental state that represents a commitment to carry out an action or actions in the future. Now, if you're looking for quotes about intentions, you will find a plethora of them profound, sincere, wonderful, thoughtful, and of course, the cliches, the platitudes, the banal. Yet lump them all together, simplify the lot, and what you get end up with is, the road to hell is paved. <laughs> you got it. <laughs> Intentions have variants. One size does not feel, fit all. There are many theories, many shades, but it is generally accepted that intentions involve some form of desire and consist of two components, content and the attitude towards the content. There are questions of ethics, morality, and purpose of the intention. And as most of things, most intentions are not good enough. Even the best of intentions is nothing but a path of air if we don't follow up with action. Every morning we get up with good intentions, go off to work, send our kids to school, take the car for an oil change, get the roots of our hair touched up, <laughs> daily life, plans, goals, purpose. There once was a woman, me, or I if you prefer, who had very little experience in baking, but she chose to bake this elaborate, wonderful Black Forest cake. It was actually meant for a charity event. Well, the cake ended up leaning like the Leaning Tower of Pisa, standing in a black lagoon of chocolate despair. <laughs> a total disaster. Moral of the story, are good intentions enough? Of course not. I was ill-prepared, not informed, and not qualified for such an undertaking. It was all my fault, my mistake, and good intentions were not good enough excuse for this failure, but a life lesson on not letting my arrogance allow me to sabotage something that might have started with good intentions. Now, going back hundreds of years in history, to this present day, if we were to gather all the rulers, dictators, generals, kings, queens, popes, that over the centuries have invaded, plundered, killed, destroyed, and caused endless human sufferings, many times in the name of religion, if we will all be able to gather them together and ask them, what were your intentions? All, I would bet all of them would say that they did this deed with good intent to better their state, their country, their people's lives. Not one of them would admit to failure, recent history included. If it is in your belief system, uh, could you ask your creator, by whatever name you call him or her, what was your intention? Did you plan on us humans to fight and destroy this planet with our ignorance and ill will with our bad intentions? What would the answer be? We live in turbulent times. Dangerous fires are burning, fueled by hate, <coughs> greed, and disregard for human life. Dangerous fires are burning in our own country with the very real possibility of losing hard-won rights. Classroom discussions about real issues are scrutinized and restricted, with language that is so ambiguous to confuse and terrify teachers of consequences and so limit real venues for children to find answers. It's done with good intentions. 
Aggressive anti-abortion laws are being passed in many states, stigmatizing women who need and deserve abortion access. It's done with good intentions to protect the unborn, no matter what the circumstance of the conception or the mental state of the woman. It's done with good intentions. Conservative leaders and concerned groups advocate the banning of books in school libraries out of concern for the well-being of the children and in, pro in the process encourage bigotry and racism. Their concern is so great that a common cuss word will trigger outrage about the well-being of their children. Being blind to the harm of so social media and popular music. It's done with good intentions. Perhaps you remember the quote from Fahrenheit 451. You don't have to burn books to destroy a culture. Just get people to stop reading them. Tens of thousands, tens of thousands of children have died in the, tw last, in the past 20 years because of gun violence. And still, the laws have not changed. Good intentions are total failure. Poverty is increasing. Home prices are out of control. Medical care impossible. Elder care, children and youth care, animal welfare, and environmental disasters all are failing, 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 despite our best intentions. What path are we on? Home of the brave and the free? We are going backward. Now maybe you will disagree, but to me the most useless phrase is, our thoughts and prayers are with you. Mm -hmm. A sentence so carelessly used in the face of real tragedies, sorrows and sufferings, its intent to sound caring, good intentions abound. But it will not feed a hungry mouth, provide shelter, heal broken families, or right or wrong. It's just, just a bunch of empty promises. You can say it a thousand times, and maybe even mean it. After all, it's good intention. But it is not good enough. Make some noise, write a letter, Send an email, write a check, rattle the chain, be outraged, pick a cause, even the smallest one. Do something. Righteous outrage is always a good thing. Every deal with, deal with good intentions, the mundane, the complex, the unattainable. The plant we bought with high hopes still sits in its pot. The closet we want to organize last year still hasn't been touched. The lamp with the burned out bulb is still dark. Good intentions alone won't get your chores done. And then there are the difficult ones, the broken ones that make us uncomfortable, even ashamed of our frailty the call to an old friend we've been putting off, the long talk we have been wanting to have to put things right, the unspoken words of love and remorse that despite our best intentions were never spoken and suddenly it's too late. Good intentions that weren't good enough, the task not finished, the objective not met. There are good intentions within us that we secretly know we will never, ever achieve. It will never come true. My intentions of being a size 10, <laughs> or baking the aforementioned black forest cake, despite my best intentions, it will not happen, ever. And I also never had any intentions to stand here speaking about them. <laughs> In my research, I learned about the many different theories on the subject. The strong desire theory, belief desire theory, self 
referentiality theory. There are articles about all kinds of intent, perspective and immediate, motivational and oblique, and much more. You can find all this inf information on Wikipedia. And I could have impressed you with my intellect by plagiarizing an article or two. <laughs> but those of you that know me, you would have seen right through that charade. <laughs> Yet I realized, I realized that in my plain and simple thought process, I have come to the same very insight. We are humans. We have weaknesses. We make promises that we fail to keep despite our best intentions. That doesn't make us evil or uncaring. And most of the times we are very well aware that the intent alone is not enough. However, we at all faiths are a shining example of good intentions being a building stone to job well done. So much has been accomplished. Yes, there's always room for improvement, and sometimes the best intentions just won't work. But we keep trying, and eventually the goal will be reached. If you dream it, it will happen. Probably not. Dreaming alone doesn't work. Dreaming about homemade apple pie won't make it appear. You gotta get up and slice them apples. <laughs> the trip to All Face takes me down Palm Beach Boulevard, past dollar stores, food trucks, repair businesses, and the obligatory fast food, food places found on every bu busy road in the USA. Not very glamorous. Not even decent median landscaping does much to soften the tired-looking buildings. But this street has a very Latin flavor. There's life to be seen, something that we lack nowadays in the homogenized look of Florida sameness. There's a traffic light and a new owner taking over the place on the corner, a bright red building drawing your eye to it Soon heaps of tires appear, just another tire store with a broken sidewalk and a strip of dirt. Over the weeks, I watched plants being planted in that poor strip of soil. I watched the owner sweep the gutter as cars zipped by, a table and chairs on the side for customers to rest and wait, and slowly that ugly strip of dirt turned green and I would smile watching him carefully water the plants with an old can, being doubtful at, his, at him succeeding. Last Sunday, while waiting for the light to change, I saw it. The first lily was blooming. I was so happy for him. Despite all negative influences, beauty appeared. A lesson to be learned. Plant your good intentions. Nurture them. Let them grow and take root along the infamous road to hell and push out the pavers of ill will and hate and meanness. One step at a time. One good intention at a time. Let hope and peace bloom. Thank you. Thank you, Annalie. <laughs> now I have to change my plans for tomorrow at work. But <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Uh -oh. Well, it's time for our offertory, and if you've never been here before, most of us know this, but if you're new, uh, our minister always tells a joke before the offertory because he thinks it inspires people to give. Happy people, laughing people, give more money. So here's my attempt. Father O'Malley answers the phone and hears, Hello, is this Father O'Malley? Yes, it is. This is the IRS. We're wondering if you can help us. 
I'll certainly try, says Father O'Malley. Do you know a Ted Houlihan? I do. Is he a member of your congregation? He is. Did he donate $10,000 to your church? He will. <laughs> and now the morning offering will be <laughs> taken. And uh, we really appreciate your support of our congregation. Understand me now. Sometimes you see that I am mad. Don't you know that no one can always be an angel when everything goes wrong? You seem so bad. Cause I'm just a soul whose intentions are good. Oh Lord, please don't let me be misunderstood. Understand me. Understand me, baby. Sometimes I'm so carefree, a little joy is hard to hide. Sometimes I feel that all, all I have is worry when you're bound to see my other side. Cause I'm just a soul whose intentions are good. Oh Lord, please don't let me be misunderstood. closing words are this. We leave this gathered community, but we don't leave our connection, our concerns, our concerns, our care for each other, our service to each other, to the world, and to our faith continues. Until we are together, a fr a together again, friends, be strong, be well, be true, and be loving. sun doo -doo -doo. here comes the sun and I say it's all right little darling it's been a long cold lonely winter little darling it feels like years since it's been here here comes the sun here comes the sun, and I say, it's all right. Little darling, the smiles returning to their faces. Little darling, it seems like years since it's been here. Here comes the sun. Here comes the sun, and I say, it's all right. Darling, 
I feel the ice is slowly melting Little darling, it seems like years since it's been clear Here comes the sun, here comes the sun And I say, it's alright Thank you, Carlos, and thank you for sharing your gift of music with us every week. We appreciate it. Thank you, Anna Lee, for your message. We're glad you took on Reverend CJ's challenge. <laughs> and thank you to uh, Ed Elrod and Sharon Gray on sound and recording. And thank you to everyone else who's behind the scenes that made this service happen today. There's many of us uh, who are not mentioned every Sunday, but there's a lot of people behind the scenes that make the service happen. So thank you very much. And now I would like to ask Linda Runkle to please come and extinguish the chalice. As we repeat the words in your order of service, we extinguish this flame, but not the light of truth, the warmth of community, or the fire of commitment. These we carry in our hearts and out into the world. Go now in peace and stay warm. Thank you.